Hello everyone, this is Muhammad Tuhami, author of Midway Simplicity and welcome to a new episode of the Midway Decluttering Show where you will find practical tips to help you declutter your first 100 items. And my very special guest today is Sandy Cripps from Modern Simplicity, a great and awesome blog and she was also the author of a new book called Fresh Start, 31 Days to Simplify, Declutter and Reign in the Chaos. Welcome, Sandy. Well, thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Tell us more about your book and first start. Oh, so, my, yeah. my book uh, started out as something I tried about a year ago. It was a 31-day plan to kind of go through my entire house and my entire schedule and figure out ways to simplify things and clean up and just kind of get a fresh start, basically. Um, Sometimes when you're feeling really chaotic and really crazy, you just need to step back and take a look at how everything's going. And my 31-day plan was kind of my version of how to figure out how to do that, get rid of some of the stuff around the house, get rid of some of the, the extras that were in the schedule, and, and mm. simplify things. Give us a, a, a brief idea uh, about how did you declutter, you, you started the decluttering process, and how did you get rid of your first 100 items? Um, well, I actually first began my journey into decluttering when my first son was born. He's seven now. But uh, I was suddenly very aware of the legacy that we were leaving our children, the waste and the excess, and that really bothered me. So I started looking around the house, and I found all these places where my family was creating waste and living beyond our needs. So uh, I really wanted to take a step back and try to simplify things so that that wasn't the legacy I was leaving my children. And also, when you have small children around the house, um, the amount of time it takes to clean just gets really out of hand. So I wanted to spend more time with my children instead of cleaning. And so the less stuff we had in the house, the faster it was to clean and the more time I could spend on what really matters, which was my family. Yeah, that's very true. So, so where exactly did you begin the process? My, uh, I started in the bathroom. I think the bathroom is the easiest place to declutter first. Uh, it's the first place you go to in the morning. It's the last place you go to at night. And it's usually the smallest room in the house. So it has a lot of clutter in there, but it's all stuff that you're not emotionally attached to. So I started in the bathroom with all of the extra shampoos that we weren't using, the products that I had bought but I didn't like. So they were just creating clutter in there and catching dust, basically. So it was much easier for me to start in the bathroom looking at all this extra stuff that I didn't need and pull that out. And then that gave me a fresh place every morning and every night where I had a, a nice, simple place to start. And that really inspired me to go through the rest of the house. Yeah. And what was your, your biggest challenge? Uh, during the decluttering process? My biggest challenge is, um, has always been my kids' stuff, especially the gifts that they're given from grandparents and friends and things. I They have so much stuff, and that's not really the legacy I want them to have. I want them to understand that less is more, but it's still very difficult for me to go through their stuff and help them understand why we don't need as much of it. So that is always my biggest thing. And in my house, that is, continues to be the most cluttered areas are my kids' rooms and their, and their play areas. Yeah. Uh, and what, what were the things that you could do or tweak uh, when it comes to this, uh, this type of challenge? Um, I think the places to tweak the most are getting everybody else in your house on board. Because when you're no, working I mean, together, I, I it's a lot you, easier to go through the house and see yeah. things. Yeah. So you, you mean you got your children involved in the process? So that this yes. helped uh, the, the process to, uh, to become uh, easier? Right. That's exactly what I mean. Um, I got my children involved. I got my husband involved so that when we were going through this process together, it wasn't just me saying, you know, I don't think you need that anymore. We're not playing with that. Let's get rid of it. It became more of a thing where I was with them saying hey, are we actually playing with this? Maybe we could give this to another child who doesn't have toys like we do. And it became more of a sharing mentality with them. And that was some, a tweak I did to our routine that really helped get them on board with what I was doing. 
That's great. So let me share with you some of the challenges that I received from my readers uh, okay. when it comes to decluttering. So the first one is that somehow people feel overwhelmed by too much stuff. And when they see the clutter everywhere, they see the kind of they they feel stuck. They don't know where to start and how to manage all these piles of clutter. So what can you do about that? Mm -hmm. Definitely, I've definitely been there. So I understand that feeling very well. Um, the important part is when you see all that stuff and it's overwhelming, remember that you don't have to do it all at once. Um, you don't need to rush or compete with other people. So as long as you're doing one little thing at a time, you don't need to worry about how much stuff there really is. Just take your time and just do little by little. And when you start feeling overwhelmed again, just take a step back and rest if you need to. It's, it's not a race. We're all in yeah. this in different points. So this, uh, in fact, I believe this is a very easy approach and it's doable, but it has one drawback, mm -hmm. which is the focus part. Because usually yeah. when something takes too long to complete or to finish, people will lose focus in the middle of the journey and they will uh, forget about decluttering because it, it's taking too long and I'm seeing very little progress. So how to stay focused and keep, stay motivated? Um, that's actually one of the reasons I start with a small room like the bathroom because it doesn't take very long to see results and it's something that you see every day. And that can really give you the energy to move on to other places that you're at every day. And if you take smaller areas first, like your desk or your kitchen counter, and you declutter them and then make an effort to keep them clean, that builds the energy for when you need to tackle the really big rooms, like a playroom or your closet if it's getting out of hand. So starting with those little stuff first, that way you have the constant reassurance that you are getting somewhere is what keeps you focused the rest of it. Mm, that makes sense. And, and what about people who lack organizational skills? So no matter how, 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 how decluttering work they do, things seem to be scattered everywhere as well. So Right. Well, the nice thing about decluttering is the less stuff you have, the less you need to worry about the organizing part. If you don't have as much stuff, then you don't have as much stuff that you need to organize per se. Um, but what I found is just making that first effort to give each thing a home that you love. So if I have my, let's say my workbooks for writing my next book, instead of just leaving them all over the house, if I know that that's something that's important to me, then I need to find a place to put it, which in my case would be on my desk next to my computer so that I always know where it is. And that's not really organizing per se, it's just making sure that the things that you love and that you respect are given a place where you can find them again so that you're not constantly crazy. So the less stuff you have, the less you have to worry about the organizing. And if you just think of it as more like, where am I gonna give this a home? Then it's not really as overwhelming to think about. Yeah, this is a very interesting perspective, I believe. Some, sometimes people are too exhausted uh, by, by so many stuff and, and, and tasks and people to take care of and, and they left with uh, very little time or energy to pursue any, any kind of extra decluttering work. So what can you do about that? Right. Right. I definitely understand that. Um, it can get really busy, especially when you're juggling a family and work and all of those kinds of things. And that's where the uh, little bit of the time thing really helps. Um, we all come back after a long day exhausted and look around and think there's just way too much to do. But it comes back to that old idea that, you know, if you just spend 15 minutes a day on something, that 15 minutes really, really adds up. So the chances are once you get started, you can find the energy to do just a little bit more. So my advice would be either to find some time either first thing in the morning or like uh, right after the kids go to bed and just set a timer for just 15 minutes and just do a little bit then. And then if you have the energy to keep going, great. But if not, at least you did that little bit. And so that's something to be proud of, that little bit that you were able to do and then try again tomorrow. So it's still gonna be there. It didn't get there in one day. It's not gonna leave in one day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you were lucky that your children and spouse were, they, they accepted your, your new lifestyle or new, your new mindset. But so many people face a huge resistance from their family and friends. 
Uh, they think that they are crazy. This is not the, uh, the right thing to do, getting rid of all this right. stuff. Why and what's the reason behind that? So maybe you can share with us what are the key persuasion points that you use to persuade your family to join you in, the, in your journey so that people can, can try to use it uh, right. in their own. Well, my husband has been on board since the very beginning, the very first time I mentioned it. So that's been very helpful. My kids, not always so much. I usually have to convince them. But um, the things I found most important are don't mess with other people's stuff. Lead by example instead. Because it's really offensive to other people if you go in and you start cleaning things or start picking things up and say, you know what, you don't need this anymore because that's not your decision to make. So it's more important to lead by example and maybe give the benefits of why you're doing this. Like the reason I want to clean my office is so that it takes me less time to clean and so that I can find my stuff because I don't want to spend all my days pushing paper around. So I would lead by example and then show the benefits of it. That way when I'm trying to convince my kids that I want them to clean up their toys, I can remind them that if they clean them up and get rid of a few, they can find the ones they really love and they don't have to spend as much time cleaning up all their stuff at the end of their playtime. They'll have more time to actually play. But I wouldn't want to go in there and actually just start taking their stuff from them because that's the exact wrong way to go about it. That's just going to make them angry and make them not want to get on board with it. So that's kind of my advice to people who are having trouble convincing their family members to come along with it. That's great. Uh, leading by example is always uh, the best way to persuade people to follow your path. Or Right. So what about decluttering sentimental items? Like items that are associated with good memories, items that are precious, expensive, valuable, items that you received as valuable gifts from people you love. Uh, so, but, but anyway, you no longer need mm -hmm. these items in your life. So how to get rid of them, how right. to declutter this stuff? That is a tough one, and that's one I've struggled with too. Um, I've always, there's the thing that you can do where you can take pictures of something, and I have done that with some of my things, especially the things that are kind of precious with me. I'll take a picture with it so that, you know, I can see both my connection to it and the item. Um, it's been particularly tough with baby things that were my children's, and they're very precious to me, and I can remember that. So I want to make sure I have pictures of them with it. But at the same time, you know, it still can be hard to get rid of it, even when you have those pictures or written memories of it. So a lot of times I like to offer it to other people I love that may also have a sentimental attachment to it. So if it was something that maybe I had as a child, I might want to offer it back to my parents to see if, you know, they want it and say, you know, I loved this as a child, but I don't really need it anymore and it doesn't have a place in my home now. So if you don't want it, I'd like to offer it to somebody else that might. And then the other thing is to look for other people who can really use the item. It takes some of the sentimental out when you know that it's going to somebody who's actually going to use it and it's not just going to sit there collecting dust or hidden in the back of a drawer, but instead it's actually going to somebody who needs it. And there are a lot of people out there that need things that we're just holding on to for no reason. So I try to think more of the need versus the, well, I just love it and I want to keep it. Yeah. yeah. And, and what about the what if uh, struggle? You know, what if I will need this item one day in the future that will never come and never comes. Yeah, so yes. uh, how to work out this attitude? Um, yeah, that's a hard one too. And it, it's really tempting to hold on to things because you're like, well, I might need that. And it's still in good shape. So it could definitely be useful again. But again, I come back to the, uh, the idea that there's somebody out there that needs it right now, as opposed to me needing it maybe later. And it's, in this day and age, most things that we get rid of, we can easily replace. So if I get rid of something and I find out a year from now that, yes, I do need an item like that, I can go find another one. Chances are really good. It's either at the local store or there's probably somebody else getting rid of one right now, too. And so just checking around with friends or online, you can find another one really easily. And so I would rather it go to some somebody who uses it right now as opposed to me maybe needing it later, but maybe not needing it ever again. So I just try to think of it as the yeah. actual need versus maybe. Yeah, helping someone in need now is better than keeping something that you don't need and it's not a pressing uh, issue for you. So it's, it's all sharing is, is much better, yeah. 
And, right. and, and what are your tricks? Right, it's not good yeah. for me to keep it to myself. Yeah. And what are your tricks to overcome your purchasing desires? Because if you keep on buying more stuff, then all the decluttering work you do will become useless. So what are your right. personal tricks to, to overcome or hold on your purchasing desires? Right. And that's a hard one because when I was growing up, shopping was one of my hobbies. And so it took a long time to get past that idea that shopping is fun and that it should actually be more utilitarian. So when I'm out and about and I'm seeing something that maybe I feel like I want to buy, my first thought is actually, am I going to use this right now? And do I have a place to put it? Because if I'm just going to bring it home and set it on the table and be like, well, you know, it's beautiful and I love it, but where am I going to put it and what am I going to do with it? Then that just reminds me that later I'm going to have to go back and worry about decluttering it. Because if I don't have a need for it right now and if I don't have an actual place to put it right now, it's going to quickly become one of those things that I'm going to have to declutter later. And that's just a waste of money, a waste of time, a waste of resources. So I always try to think of that of what is my immediate need and is this something I'm going to have to get rid of six months from now? Because then I just don't even want to mess with it. It's too much energy. Yeah, sometimes people say that the, the, the need is just the joy of buying something new. This is the need. It's not related to the item itself or the functionality of this item. It's, it's just related to the joy that I feel of getting a new piece of cloth, a new uh, okay. you know, appliance in, at, at home. So the, the feeling itself, the, the enjoyment that is associated with shopping, uh, buying new items, pampering myself and so on. So, so how and, to control that? You know, that feeling can also be um, taken care of with other things that don't require stuff. Like, I love a good cup of coffee, so if I'm feeling the need to pamper myself, I would rather go get a cup of coffee that I can drink and not have any leftover clutter to show for it. Or, you know, just getting an ice cream cone on a hot day. Or it could be something as simple as, I really want to pamper myself, so maybe I'll just go to the spa or get my nails done. And that's all stuff that I can pamper myself with, but it doesn't leave any excess junk laying around. So it would be a lot more fun for me to go take my kids out for ice cream and go to the park than it would be for me to bring a bunch of bags home and be like, okay, where are we going to put all this stuff now? So there's still an immediate gratification that you can take care of that doesn't involve things. Yeah, so I think it's, it's, it's a good idea to just write a list of things that makes you happy so that when you feel the need to, to, for, for some enjoyment yes. or happiness, just do something from this list. And most probably it will be either free or it's some money well spent, you know, rather than right. uh, adding on more stuff. that we don't Right, need. I would yeah. rather spend money going to a favorite concert or going to the farmer's market and buying a bunch of beautiful vegetables that I could cook for my family then just another thing that I'm going to have to dust next week. Yeah, so. yeah that's true. And, and do you have a, like a, a checklist of questions that you ask to help you decide upon what item you should keep and what item you should get rid of? Or um, It's not really a checklist per se, but it's more like I'll look at an item and I'll say, is this something I'm using or is this something a family member is actively using any time in the past you know, few weeks? Is this something that we just love and that makes me happy every time I see it? Or is this something that I feel guilty, like I can't get rid of it, in which case I really should get rid of it? Um, so it's more of a matter of looking at something and go, am I using this? Do I really love it? Is it just sitting in my closet and nobody ever sees it, which means it's not as important to me as maybe I think it is? And going through those kinds of thoughts before I actually give something away. And then I try to think about the person who needs it more than I do. And if I give this away, who might this go to that could use it right now? And when I think about that, then it makes it a lot easier to get rid of it. So my charity box that I keep in the garage is actually called a blessing box because I, instead of giving stuff away, I'm thinking I'm blessing other people with it. Wow, so. that's, a, that's a very interesting perspective. And uh, at the end, can you share with us a, like a couple of your favorite decluttering methods or techniques? That, okay. are no, are, that are not too time consuming, like you said, 15 minutes a day maximum or something like that. Right. Uh, one of the easiest things is to just keep a box or a bag like in the garage or in the closet or even just by the door 
where as you're moving around your day, if you see something that you're not using or that's kind of getting in your way while you're trying to go about your day, you can just go ahead and pick it up and take it directly to the box. And that's something that's not taking time out of your day to declutter per se. It's just you're seeing something and going, you know, I don't use that. Instead of dealing with it later, go ahead and just take it out right now and put it in your box so that you can go ahead and get rid of it. Um, and another thing is just start with little spaces at a time. If you only have 10 minutes, then maybe tackle a kitchen cabinet. And if you've got, if you, every time you open the cabinet, all these cups fall down on you, then maybe you could spend just five minutes pulling out the ones you don't use anymore, prettying up the ones that you do have, and then go about your day and do something else. So it doesn't have to be a, a thing that you set aside specific time for and waste your entire Saturday afternoon doing. You can do little bits as you're going about your normal activities and still get a lot done. Awesome. Uh, at the end of the call, do you have like um, an inspirational quote or words of wisdom that guides your journey and that you would like to share with our viewers? I have a lot of quotes. I actually love quotes and I collect them. So I have a lot of simplicity quotes that are all over my computer and stuff. But my very favorite one, and it's the one that's on the end of every one of my emails, is um, Simplicity is the Ultimate Sophistication. And it's by Leonardo da Vinci. And I love that one because when you're in the media these days, you're seeing all of this stuff about how you can be better and be more and be more popular. And it's always to get more stuff. But when you think about it, if you really want to be sophisticated, it's all about the simplicity of knowing who you are and what you actually need and what you actually want and showing that to people as opposed to just collecting more stuff. So I try to keep that particular quote in the front of my mind all the time. Sophistication. Yeah. Uh, simplicity it, is the ultimate sophistication. It's, a, it's the very first time to hear that perspective about this quote. So it, it, you see it as uh, an invitation to people who would like to be sophisticated. That choose yes. simplicity rather than choosing simplicity. To, yeah, it's exactly instead of choosing the more, choose less, and yeah. you can still be even more sophisticated. <laughs> yeah, so, that's a that's very, my favorite one. That's very interesting, uh, Sandy. Thank <laughs> you very much for the uh, wealth of wisdom that you shared with us in in the call today, and I hope to have you on another show where we talk about a different topic. Definitely. Thank you for having me. It and was fun. Con con and congratulations for your new book. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye.